What's going on, my good people? Out here again, man. Trying to do something with my body, man. Trying to get my body in balance, man. I have my work, man. Paying myself. Hey, man, you paid everybody else. Get out there and pay yourself. Anyways. I just want to tell y'all about this, like, this moment I had the other day, man. So, I'm with the homies, right? My homie, we supposed to be getting fitted for touches, man. My boy, he getting married in April. So, he trying to get a jump on us getting fitted for tuxes. So, boom, we do all that business. But the, the moment prior, we had had a conversation. I was telling some real man shit about marriage. And um, I love when youngsters soak up game, dog. You get into this marriage game, think you know everything, and then you get up in here and you have some real life problems, you don't know how to handle it. So I was giving them some key advice, man. And so after we finished over getting fitted for the tux, he's like, hey man, y'all wanna eat? So right across the way, it was a mod pizza. So we head over there eat some pizza right so we continue in this conversation because he's telling me how he applied the knowledge that i gave him to figure out a problem figure out a figure out a solution with him and his uh, fiance and so um this man come by he walked by he asked for some money we like nah we, we all use our credit card we don't have no money no cash so he go on out to the bathroom so we continue on this conversation and so at this point i'm giving a spiritual lesson on marriage by the time this man come out the bathroom and so the man come by and it's the second time he just stopped our conversation so now i'm kind of annoyed so I'm trying to figure out what you want. So he stopped us again. He said, hey man, I, I hear y'all over here talking about God. He said, y'all men of God. I said, yeah. And so he was like, um, is it possible that you could pray for me? And so as I'm sitting there about to pray for this man inside of my pizza, Something said that's a little bit too easy. You know how you could give somebody a prayer and, and the prayer is all uplifting and then they go off, they skip off feeling good about themselves, but they don't really get no meat. Like it ain't no, it ain't no spiritual food. Like you still hungry. Ooh, I'm hungry. Yeah, man, you still hungry. So I said, look here, man. To tell you the truth, I'm a Christian counselor, but I don't know how to pray for people. I don't know how to pray for people. But if you want something, I want to help you get there. So I say, look, I don't know how to pray for nobody, but let me ask you something. What do you want? He was like, man, I want this, 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 and this for my life. I want a better life. I said, okay, what's stopping you right now from having this life that you say that you want? And he started talking about, he said, uh, he was pausing. I said, don't tell me it's your finances. And again, he paused again. He was like, yeah, it's finances. I said, okay, well, let me show you something about attitude and finances. Um, so I showed him my phone. I'm a business owner with a family of five. And I done had all types of crazy sh uh, crap happen this guy dog old year, dog. I'm talking about stuff that will throw your whole damn life off. And so I show on my phone, I say my bank account negative. And I'm here preaching to these young men or to this young man about, you know, being positive in his marriage, not worrying about what the bank accounts say, worrying about what the plans say. And so he sit down at this point, he like, oh shit. Yeah, ain't got no money in my bank account, homeboy. When I told you I ain't had no money, you thought I was playing. I'm out here trying to get my life out here. I done had 
my business was shut down for almost two months for permits. So imagine you done went from $6,000 to in the last two months, you done made $2,000. This is business. This is business. You got to roll with the punches. You got to stay positive. You got to stay with the plan. The plan is the plan. And so I'm going in on him. I'm saying, okay, what's your other problem? What else is, since, since we didn't rule finances out, what's your other problem? So I told y'all he just sat down because I didn't, I didn't humbled him a little bit. I didn't brought him down. He thought that I was the bread man. I'd be looking like people see me and I'd be walking straight forward and I'd be, you know, my demeanor says that I got some bread. <laughs> but what he don't understand is I feel like money. I feel like whatever happened in my life, it do not matter. I will be successful no matter what. So then he tells me, well, I say, you got any addictions, anything that's holding you back? He say, yeah, man, I, I got on crack cocaine a couple years ago and it's been hard to kick. I said, what do you want? You told me what you wanted and you didn't say crack cocaine. So you need to get rid of that. And I said, let me tell you how. Get you a foundation, young man. Get you a foundation. This man way older than me. This man had to be at least 10 years older than me. But I said, homeboy, you need a foundation. I say, what is your foundation? What keeps you grounded? He said, God. I said, what God? That would be throwing people off because people be uh, worshiping the goofy God. And then some people be worshiping the anything God. Well, anything goes. Oh, you can do anything you want. If you mess up, God just forgive you. Anything, God. Nope. Then I said, uh, the goofy God. Oh, okay, the goofy God. All the goofy shit in the world, the goofy God be like, yep, that's good. And <laughs> that's good too. <laughs> that's the goofy God. My God say, I got to live by a foundation. I got to have a foundation, a firm foundation. Your house will not stand without a firm foundation. That's why the church in disarray, because the foundation is jacked up. So let's move along. I'm going in. I'm going in. He is not expecting this conversation today. But I don't know how to pray for you. I just want to help you get what you said you wanted. So let's continue. So he like talk about, OK, OK, that says let's get on a firm foundation. I said, brother, you need to get busy about your life. That plan you talk about. It ain't for to happen overnight. You probably got about six, seven years. And you got to kick crack cocaine, bud. Your whole life would have been shambles. You're going to twitch. Everybody going to think you fucking crazy when you kicking that crack cocaine, homie. I said, you need to get extremely busy about your life. I said, um, I had a sex addiction, bro. I wrote a whole book about my sex addiction. I said, I wasn't shame no more. I want to help somebody with this addiction because I know men struggle with this. I said, I was spending all my money on women um, and not just giving them the money, but just like going on dates and being real appeasing and doing all, hey man. I said, when I started investing into my craft and I started not worrying about sex, all the women that I wanted showed up. When my finances was right, when my life was together, when my communication skills were up to par, then the women that I wanted showed up. All of them. I said, so then I had to gain control of my sexual function. You can't have sex with all these women that's showing up. You pick the one you want, you move on. I said, so now I have control over my sexual self. I have discipline. My foundation say, nope. That ain't going to, that's that, that's that cook, that's the cookies. I'm looking for the broccoli. I'm looking for the, the stuff that's nourishing to my body. Them cookies, mm, it's good, but there's no nourishment in the cookie. You're not for to grow big and strong with no goddamn cookie, eating cookies and shit all day. You need some goddamn substance, some vegetables, some, some greens, some, you need that in your life. Going in on this man. And at the end, he was like, uh, I ain't never heard nobody talk to me like that. I said, well, I hope from now on you meet kingdom men and they do speak to you that way. 
I said, we got a lot of kings out here. It's a lot of queens out here. But what type of king you gonna be? You gonna be a Burger King or a real king? He said, I'm gonna be a king. I said, when I see you in five years, brother, we gonna have to talk about that. If you're not moving on that kingdom path, I'm gonna check you again. And I know I'm gonna see this man again. This man is at random. I might never see him again. But if, that, if I save that man, well, I'm gonna tell you what the kingdom gonna do for me. I can't even tell you what the kingdom gonna do because I'll be expecting stuff in return. I just be wanting to help people. I don't want people to be stuck. Now I don't want people to be spiritually sick, man. Some people be, they spirit be sick, bro. They still be living out here and be dead. They don't have no belief in themselves. If you don't have no belief, you might as well be dead. If you don't have no faith that you can change things today. Man, look here. Go ahead, go jump. And so, like with men, I don't like to pitter-patter around with them. You said you want something. It's time to go out and get it. God said, whatever you want it, whatever you want it, it's out there for you. Go get it. And so after we, after I finished talking to him, the two guys I was with, they said, look here, that was all the spiritual food we needed for the day. Like sometimes you could be talking to somebody and the message sound good, but when you get off of them, and you get on to someone and somebody see that you still got the same message and you living this message yourself. Tell me, that's how you change the hearts of men. That's how you change the hearts of men. When I say Israel, wake up, man, I be meaning it. It's time to wake up. <laughs>